Hey guys, we have a couple of topics for you today. The first one is we will go over a flux curve of Tabby Star for today, August 10th, and we'll do this by showing you a light curve update from the Tabby team showing the detection of a fast transient dip that may have occurred and a potential recovery from the short-term dimming seems to be starting. We will also show you evidence that allows us to say with very good confidence the characteristics of the light blocking material that is causing the long-term accelerating dimming of Tabby Star. So this is a light curve from Tabby's team taken in the R band. And this is the fast dip that occurred the night before last. And apparently it was detected from two different telescopes. So you know guys, this is really possible to have happened. And we actually believe this, but can you imagine the weird shape and huge size of whatever did this? And lastly, circled in red are the latest three data points showing signs of a potential recovery. So for our second topic, this is the graph of the short-term dimming event of Tabby Star in May of this year, 2017. And there were three different filters being used to measure the flux. The red line in the graph represents the filter with the longest wavelength band pass, and the blue line represents the filter with the shortest wavelength band pass. So I bring this graph up because we are going to make a conclusion about the long-term dimming and what the blocking material is and is not. So before we go there, we want to show you that the different wavelengths of light are attenuated or decreased differently to the material that is blocking, absorbing, or scattering the light. If the material is totally solid, no light will penetrate regardless of its wavelength, and there should be no differentiation between the light curves of the different filters. If the material is, say, interstellar gas or dust, there will be a differentiation between the light curves of the different filters. The shorter wavelengths of light will attenuate or decrease more than the longer wavelengths of light, like what you see in this graph between the red curve, the longest wavelength, and the blue curve, which is the shortest wavelength. So on this channel, we typically show you flux measurements taken in the V-band or B-band. And the V-band, as you can see, has a longer wavelength at 551 nanometers than the B-band at 445 nanometers. So if the blocking material causing the long-term accelerating dimming of Tabby Star is gas or fine dust or some other free-floating chemical, we would expect to see a different accelerating curve for the V-band versus the B-band. So as you know, we have this V-band data taken over a 10-month period by an astronomer on AAVSO who goes by the observer code LDJ. His actual name is David Lane. Well, fortunate for us, he also took data in the B-band at the same time he took the V-band data. So suppose this red curve represents the V-band measurements taken over those same 10 months. And suppose that the blue curve represents the B-band measurements taken also over those same 10 months. So if the long-term dimming is being caused by accumulating dust or gas or other volatiles, the blue curve of the B-band should slope down faster than the red curve of the V-band as shown in this graph. Therefore, the distance between the two curves should increase as time progresses. D1 will be less than D2, which is less than D3, which is less than D4, and which is less than D5, and so on. So for the long-term accelerating dimming of Tabby Star, if the difference between the B-band and the V-band gets larger and larger as time progresses, then the material blocking Tabby Star is most likely gas, dust, or some other accumulating chemical that differentially absorbs, blocks, or scatters light according to its unique wavelength. But if the difference between the B-band and the V-band remains constant, then the material accumulating around Tabby Star, which is causing the long-term accelerating dimming, should be a solid material that blocks and absorbs all wavelengths of light equally. So let's do the math now, guys. If you take the B-band minus the V-band over these last 10 months, we get this column of deltas. And graphing them, we get this. 
Notice that the deltas remain well contained within the channel indicated by the red parallel lines. Therefore, we can summarize that since the difference between the B-band and the V-band remain constant, then the material accumulating around Tabby star, which is causing the long-term accelerating dimming, is a solid material that blocks and absorbs all wavelengths of light equally. As a double check, we can also do a quicker and dirtier version of this in a horizontal fashion versus the vertical approach that was just shown. So taking the absolute value of the difference between the first V-band data point taken in September 21st of 2016 with the one taken on July 26th of this year, we get a 2.9% drop in flux over 10 months in the V-band. If we do a similar thing to the B-band data on those same dates, we get a 2.6% drop in flux over 10 months in the B-band, which are almost statistically identical. If anything, the V-band has a steeper slope. So guys, from everything we have concluded on this channel since we began it, we can make the following statements about the long-term accelerating dimming of Tabby Star. The blocking material causing the long-term dimming of Tabby Star is non-varying and seems to be uniform around the star. The long-term dimming is not varying back and forth in brightness as it would be if there were thick and thin portions of light blocking material surrounding the star. The long-term dimming of Tabby Star is accelerating. The material that is causing the long-term accelerating dimming of Tabby Star is not gas or dust, but is a non-transparent material, perhaps solid, that blocks and or absorbs all wavelengths of light equally. The non-transparent material, perhaps solid, seems to have a permanence and is consistently and uniformly building up around the star as the long-term accelerating dimming progresses. The long-term acceleration of Tabby Star is the predominant feature of the star and will cause the star to reach beyond its limiting magnitude and become undetectable within 14 years from now at the current projected acceleration dimming rate. And it is highly likely that the short-term dimming events are somehow related to the long-term accelerating dimming and may be related to the building up of the non-transparent material, perhaps solid, around the star. So guys, uh, the short-term dips are really the distraction. The real prize is the long-term accelerating dimming that has the potential to change our place in the cosmos. It is the predominant feature of Tabby Star. Well guys, we're gonna be taking a couple of days off, so it'll be a few days before you see us again, but we'll be back with new materials. So take care and we will see you in our next video.